Hey, Dev, come here. Can you come here? Can you come here? Can you come here? All right. Good boy. So, I'm making this video to uh, just to let you guys know where I've been, first of all, but also videos like this were critical in my recovery. I went down rabbit holes on YouTube just watching video after video. Just It just helped me to see people that went through similar shit to like know that they came out on the other side all, all right, you know? I never made a vlog before, so uh, bear with me. I feel kind of uncomfortable talking to a camera, but I got my little brother here, so uh, we're, give <laughs> we're giving it a shot. Also, I was real hesitant to make a video like this because right now I have 170, 175 days of continued sobriety, which in the grand scheme of things, like isn't much time at all. So I'm by no means like the spokesperson for sobriety. Um, I, I'm gonna try not to give advice. I'm gonna just, all I can do is tell the truth, tell my story. I figure if I come at this from a place of honesty and then, you know, if it helps like one of my fans like five years from now or something, then it was worth doing. So, you know, that's my mindset with this whole thing. But yeah, just letting you know, I'm still like struggling hella and I'm still learning and figuring the shit out every day. So, uh, but yeah, I'm just going to start from the beginning of how I got here, how I fucking, how I got myself here. I'm currently in recovery from alcohol, cocaine, and Xanax. Um, it started with alcohol, so I'm just gonna start from the beginning with booze. So when I was a kid, I, 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 I was always in my head. I was an introvert. I had bad social anxiety. You know, I cared too much about fitting in. I cared too much about whether or not people liked me. And I was just, I was just stuck in my own head all the time. But I remember when I got drunk for the first time, all that shit went away. Like all that self doubt went away. I was able to talk to the older kids, talk to girls better. Like I, it felt like I had arrived. Like I felt like the kind of person I'd always wanted to be, if that makes sense. So I quickly became like fully obsessed with alcohol. And like I thinking back on it now, it uh probably should have known that I had kind of a different relationship with booze than because like I was always just I just cared more about it than my friends. Like I was always more obsessed with it and making sure we had it all the time and uh most of my friends weren't like that. Um and also I was pretty good at it. Like, I could, I could drink a lot without, I didn't throw up, I didn't like black out much. Like, people kind of would tell me that I was hella good at drinking, so of course I like took pride in that. So yeah, I drank throughout high school, on the just like on the weekends, nothing that crazy. But then uh, I got to college where people were drinking every day, and I just remember being like, like oh, these motherfuckers got it figured out. Like, that's, that's how I want to be. So throughout college, I drank every day, and it got pretty serious, but then it started kind of affected me different like it like I would get it wasn't as fun I would get really sloppy and like tired and pass out early and I'm kind of a workaholic so I like to be able to work and drink and it wasn't really doing that for me at a certain point but then I discovered cocaine and that's when it all sort of changed I basically was addicted to cocaine like the first time I tried it because what cocaine does you could be like drunk as hell and do a line and now you seem sober like you you stop slurring your words you're not stumbling so and you can just keep drinking so now instead of passing out at a certain point i was able to continue drinking like three days straight and i was able to get work done because coke's like fucking speed and i was also messing with adderall which is basically meth and uh so those together you know booze adderall coke I was able to just continue partying and get work done for days and days. And my career was doing pretty well at the time. So I was basically a junkie that could afford to be a junkie. Like I had a nice apartment. I was able to, you know, I paid my bills on time. I, I had enough money for food. And then I also had enough money to fuel my drug habit. And, uh, you know, cause money was coming in from like Spotify and tours and all that shit. So I just, I was able to sustain this crazy life, um, and that's partly why my uh, my bottom took so long to come because I just didn't I didn't go broke. And like in my line of work, like I don't have shit I have to be at early in the morning, so I was able to justify my party because I wasn't like getting fired from a job or like. And even when I had shit to do the next day, like say I had a studio session in the morning, I uh, I would just power through it. I I was able to do that. I, I had like a concoction of drugs 
uppers and downers that I knew would get me through the studio session. I, you know, I'd be up all night, go to the studio session with a bag of blow. If I started to come down at the session, um, I'd go in the bathroom, toot up, and then I was back, you know? And a lot of times I didn't even notice. They probably did notice, and I, but I didn't think they did. Um, and then also, coke, too much blow, like, makes you anxious and, and like, tweaky and, like, paranoid. So I would always have a Xanax on deck, too, in case I started feeling, like, having, like, a panic attack at the studio. I could pop a Xanax and go back to normal. So, I, you know, I kind of had it figured out, this fucked up game in my head. Like, I remember one story. Um, I was up all night. I had a bunch of people over at my apartment. I was up all night partying with them through the morning. So at this point, it's, like, 11 a.m. We're still just, you know, fucked up doing whatever. And I get a call, and... um it was a promoter working for the Capitol Hill Block Party, which is like a, a big festival in Seattle. And somebody dropped out and they needed me to fill in a slot for that day. And my first thought was like, fuck no, I haven't slept. I'm just completely fucked up. But then they offered me like a good amount of money. And I I counter offered and got even more money. And then that and I was like, shit, I got to do it. So I, I was basically like, yo, everyone's got to get the fuck out of my house. Um, I'm playing block party today. And I did my little concoction of drugs and somehow got there, got on stage. And I did pretty well. Like, I don't remember it that well, but people seemed to say I was, you know, I, was, I had fun and I didn't really fuck up my words or anything like that. I, I did it and I got paid and it worked. And because of shit like that, that because it worked... I convinced myself that I could go on doing this forever. Like, I thought, I thought I had a, I beat the system or some dumb shit. But then there were other times when, like, it started, when, when it would backfire. Like, I remember I sold out the show box in Seattle, which was a huge deal. Of course, I didn't think of it as a huge deal at the time, because, like, I was just depressed as fuck or on a bunch of drugs. So I just didn't even care, you know, I was taking all that shit for granted. And, uh, the day of the show box, I was going through a Xanax withdrawal, and which, if you know, you're just completely anxious. You don't want to talk to anyone, let alone fucking perform in front of thousands of people. So I was desperately looking for a Xanax, and it was like the most stressed out I'd ever been. And I, I managed to find like just the tiniest bit in one of my drawers, and it kind of saved me. I was able to do the show, but I not well, you know, like I totally had to phone that one in and I've always regretted that. But yeah, my music was still like doing well. So I thought that my drinking and drugging like coincided with my success. So I thought that was just like part of who I was, you know, I, I didn't think of it as something I would ever have to stop or ever be able to stop. Um, like on tours, I would get drunk before a show to calm my nerves do the show like half ass whatever and then after the show when I'd be talking to fans I'd uh be the creepy dude like asking them where I could find blow like they'd take a picture and I'd be like you know whisper in their ears if they knew anyone with a, with, with, with a blow connect um and I'd be like doing it in the bathrooms just to like get through the night and be able to talk to people and shit it was fucked up and uh and I did that for I remember I did that every day for we a 59 city tour that we did in 63 days, which was just pretty crazy on my body and like my mental health. Like, I remember I, I just crashed so hard when that was over. And yeah, like in the beginnings, I would reassure myself shit like I only do blow when I'm drunk or I never actually buy blow. I just get it for free from people. And and then by the end, I was buying bags of blow every day, and not when I was drunk. Just I I was just addicted to it, and. I was the type that couldn't stop until like my body shut down. Like I I would go three to four to five days in a row and I wouldn't stop until I just my body just shut down and I fell asleep. And a lot of times like fucking postmates would be on the way or something and I'd fall asleep or like the dealer would be on his way with another bag of dope and I'd pass out before he got there. That was like regular shit. And I remember this was like a regular occurrence too. Like I would stay up doing blow, my girlfriend would go to sleep, me and her didn't do drugs together, blow was something I was kind of hiding from everybody, you know, like from my friends and family and my girlfriend, and uh, she would go to sleep, I would stay up all night doing blow, and then when she would have to wake up for work at like 6am or something, 
I would crawl back in bed and pretend like I was asleep, but my heart would be like pounding and I would just be like with my eyes closed, wide awake. And I would just wait for her to go to work at seven so that I could then wake up, continue doing blow. And I remember one of those mornings, we realized my car had been stolen. So she's gone at work. I'm just doing blow all by myself, tweaking the fuck out, hella paranoid, just like a fucking weirdo. And then I get a knock on my door and my paranoid ass immediately thinks that it's the cops like coming to get me for like just doing drugs alone in my room or whatever. So I'm like sitting there trying to convince myself it's not the cops, it's not the cops. I go look through the peephole and it's the fucking cops. And what turned out is that um, my girlfriend had called them because uh, my car was stolen and I just forgot about that. So they were just there to check in, to, to file the police report about my stolen car. But I thought, but I hid everything and like flushed it down the toilet. I opened the door just sweaty as fuck, like looking crazy. <laughs> But yeah, there's just a ton of gross stories like that where I just look like a fucking pathetic, crazy person. And then you find your car two blocks away? Uh, yeah, yeah, and then I found my car like two blocks away, of course. Just such a fucking idiot. So, about the, when, once it got bad, I tried quitting. I decided I was just going to quit the hard stuff. I was going to quit uh, all the hard drugs and only smoke weed, drink, and... Uh, I even made a song where I was like, no more Coke or Xanax for me. Marijuana pussy and liquor is all I need. And now when I listen to that, I just fucking cringe. But of course, what happens when that, you try to quit the hard stuff, like, and you still drink and smoke, like, that soon becomes just not enough. Like, I could maybe make it a couple days with just alcohol and weed, and, but then soon enough, you're just like, it just doesn't last. Like, it becomes not enough very quickly. So it just doesn't, it didn't work for me at least. And also, I was convinced, I, I was able to convince myself that my drug use was only hurting me and my body. Like, I, when in reality, I was like torturing the people that love me, my friends and family and girl and shit, like, and not only that, but when I was just getting fucked up every day, when I was either on a bender or sleeping one off, I was of no use to anyone. Like, I wasn't the type of person that my friends could call when they needed help moving or, like, anything like that. Because I would sleep through the day or be fucked up. And I didn't realize that. Like, that's definitely been one of the best parts about getting sober is just being there for people. I'm so, like, people call me now, in, like, in the morning and I pick up and, you know, I'm like, I, I can be relied on. And that's been... Oh, man, that's been the fucking best. So, I tried quitting hella times, just with my own self-will, just just really trying to stop. And then everyone kind of found out about my drug use, so no one would work with me anymore. My manager wouldn't work with me until I had 30 days sober. My producers didn't want to work with me. So I, I tried to quit, and this time I was serious. My little brother's birthday was coming up on July 28th, so a week before that I quit, like officially this time. And because uh, I wanted to be there for the birthday. And then like two days after I quit, I go back out again. I couldn't do it. Um, so I end up missing my brother's birthday because I'm sleeping off another bender. And when I woke up that day, that was the last day I'd ever drank or used drugs. Because that's when I realized I had no control over this thing. You good? You can open the door. Oh, no. Just go. Just take the whole thing if you're taking him. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. So that day, July 28th, my brother's birthday that I missed, was the last day I'd ever uh, drank or drugged. Because that day I realized that I had no control over this thing. For so long I thought, yeah, I'm an alcoholic, drug addict, but like if I really wanted to, I could probably quit this shit. Turned out, because I, I really wanted to, and I couldn't do it. So... I gave up, basically. I gave up trying to quit on my own, and I reached out for help, and that's what saved my life. I got a drug counselor, and I got a sponsor in AA, and I just told them, yo, I'm done making my own dumbass decisions. I'm done thinking about trying to think my way through this shit. Tell me what to do. I will do anything. I give up, you know? And that's what saved me. But I didn't know how to be sober, 
right? So I basically think of it like this, like I had found this thing, drugs and alcohol, which made me able to function, able to live in society, able to not be in my own head all the time and be a hella anxious person. And now these things that, these things that saved me, that helped me were killing me. And I was 100% going to die if I kept, kept it up. So I had to figure out a way to live and be okay in my own body without that shit. And that's what AA did for me. That's what therapy did for me. That's what the steps, the 12 steps did for me is it teaches you a new way of just of living and getting out of your own head. And that's all I can really say about it. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not recommending AA. I'm just telling them that's, that's what's working for me right now. So now I'm at 175 days, something like that. Um, I didn't go to rehab because I wanted to kick this thing right in the city where I had all my dealers on speed dial. You know, I had to block a bunch of people, you know, a whole bunch of people that I thought were my friends that I was hanging out with every day doing drugs. Like I haven't even seen or heard from them since I got sober. Not because I hate them, just because I guess it turned out the only thing we had in common was our love of cocaine. Oh yeah, but this was like the, maybe the hardest part for me. Music and art in general, like, became a huge trigger for me. Like I had relied so heavily on drugs and alcohol to make music for so long that I didn't know if I could do it sober, even though I started doing it sober when I was young, but I didn't know if I'd get that passion back. Um, like my writing process included a glass of whiskey or vodka and a bag of blow. And that's how I would write and that's how it would work. So I had to like relearn how to make art again as a you know without that shit and I didn't know if it would come back and that shit did come back like that passion it took a while I had to I had to take 30 days off of music not think about music at all and then slowly get back into it I had to fully focus on my health and then after about 30 days I was able to slowly get back into making shit and that like childlike passion came back like it was a fucking miracle but yeah where I'm at right now like I still fucking dream about cocaine like three nights a week maybe and wake up thinking I'd relapse and I didn't and that sucks but those dreams are kind of getting less and less as I go I still have cravings but like I just know it'd kill me if, if you know I know I can't drink like a regular person anymore I can't do anything sometimes I have to use the day at a time technique which is just like if I really want to get fucked up I, I just say eh, you know maybe I'll get fucked up tomorrow but not today and then hope that the next day I feel differently and I do you know I still hit a meeting like almost every night and it helps me to just go sit with a bunch of people going through the same shit, talking about it, hearing about it and being reminded why my life now is better. Cause you know, like I'd much rather be sober, kind of wanting to get fucked up sometimes than fucked up wanting to get sober. So when I remember that, um, you know, I'm doing pretty fucking good. I'm just so lucky to still be here and have made it through and have, I feel like I kind of have a second chance, so that's where I'm at right now. Um, that's all I got.